Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, friends, and welcome to this service of worship. My name is David. I'm one of the pastors here. We're delighted to have you here uh, in person, or if you're behind that blue dot online, we're grateful to have you with us. I want to turn your attention to the bulletin. As always, there's a lot happening in and around our campus this week and beyond, and I want to make sure that we get uh, you in tune with that. Uh, first couple of things we want to point out tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is our Eat Well, Live Well series. Many of you are participating in that in partnership with the Picnic Project. You've got an insert in your bulletin about that. Um, we're talking about rice tomorrow, per, what the benefits of rice and preparing rice dishes. And uh, if you know Chef Mark, you know that it's going to be delicious. So make sure you plan on attending that. A couple more things that we want to point out. Uh, many of you know, as we announced last week, that Ryan Ganabin is now our new director of music and family ministries. And so he's already got big plans for us. And so you'll see in your bulletin that we've got a, uh, a family ministries gathering on the 3rd of March. Uh, this is just an opportunity to get to know one another, to get to know Ryan, uh, to come together to have some food. We're gonna have board games. It says one or two uh, in the bulletin, but listen, if you know Ryan, um, you, well, maybe, maybe here's, here's a tidbit about Ryan. He loves board games, as I do. There will be more than two board games. I'm just gonna say that. I'm gonna guarantee that that's gonna happen. So, um, He's got five on his person right now. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, there you go. So uh, one last call for confirmation. We're going to start next week, but if you've got uh, students in your life or in your world that you think might benefit from that, please have them talk to me uh, as soon as possible, uh, and we can get them enrolled in the class. The class will be mo uh, weekly on Sunday afternoons or Sunday after worship from 11 to 12, and it's a 12-week class, and I can give you more information if that would be helpful. Uh, last, not last thing, the next thing is if you participated in the Cost of Poverty experience a couple of weeks ago at Lakeside, I'm delighted to let you know that there are some follow-up classes uh, that we've partnered with Lakeside United Methodist Church to help kind of continue the conversation. Now, we'll give you more information about that, but just mark your calendars. There's going to be two opportunities to gather. What, when do they start? So starting this week, um, there's, a Tuesday there's a Tuesday class online at 8 p.m., and there's a Thursday class in person at 7 p.m. The in-person class will be on Lakeside's campus. Um, this is a class that's deeply rooted in Wesleyan theology and talks about kind of what is our response to, to some of these things that we see in our world, some of those things we experience during the cost of poverty experience, the kind of the so what conversation. So if you left the cost of poverty experience or you've ever done the cost of poverty experience and you've kind of had those wonderings, so how do I respond to the needs of my community in a deeply theological and biblical way? This is a great opportunity uh, for you to get involved and to, to gather with other folks who are, who are working in the same uh, direction. There's more conversation and more uh, announcements on your bulletin. Um, also, don't forget that this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. And we'll have two services, again, one at Lakeside United Methodist Church uh, at 12.15 and one here at 6.30. And so if that's something that you uh, would want to participate in, you can participate on either campus, and I promise you, you'll be welcomed either way. And then finally, and I'm going to uh, defer to Pastor Megan on this, we, um, some of you have done the visioning survey that we've put out online and hard copies. Thank you so much for the input that so many of you provided. We kind of have a next steps opportunity, and that's to gather as we accumulate this data, as we sort of synthesize this data to see where our pressure points are, where our goals might be for the next five years. There will be two opportunities to gather in the upcoming season on a Saturday, one on Saturday, one on Sunday, and the dates are, the dates are, Megan's going to tell you, Megan's going to stand up, right, and going to, we're going to put them in an email. Um, but just know that there are two dates coming up that we really would love, even if you didn't do a survey, right? Even if you didn't do a survey, but you want to come and have that conversation, again, we're kind of taking the data that we've accumulated from our community, and then we're building, visioning goals and processes from that point. So again, your voice is essential in that work, right? So we'd love to have you gather, so look for those dates in the email this week. Friends, again, more dates on the calendar, more opportunities for you to connect uh, in this community of faith. I'll leave you to it uh, to read the bulletin at your leisure. For, for now, let's take a, a breath.
Let's find ourselves fully and totally in this space, in the presence of God's people, in the presence of God's spirit, in the presence of God's movement among us. Will you join me in the call to worship? God of hope, we come into your presence this morning with confidence that you will meet us here. Where there is sadness, bring joy. Where there is tiredness, bring refreshment. Where there is despair, bring a renewed sense of hope. Let this place be a sanctuary, a safe haven for us, a home for holy words and songs and prayers as we devote ourselves to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your mercies that are new every morning. We give you thanks for this community to gather this beautiful space in which to worship. God, we thank you for the songs and the hymns and the prayers that have been written and thoughtful, thought through and read. God, we, in all elements of worship and in all that we are, we ask that we would bring glory and honor to your name. God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, fill us up and send us out. Challenge us, illumine us, move us towards you. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Won't you all stand and sing with us in our hymnal, hymn 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
turn to number 880 in your hymnal as we share together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Begottenly begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll now share together the Gloria Patri number 71. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. turn and greet your neighbor in the spirit of Jesus.
Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Daniel, chapter 3, verses 4 through 18. Then a herald shouted out, People of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, bow down to the ground and worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever their race or nation or language, bowed to the ground and worshiped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Long live the king. You issued a, issued a decree requiring that all people bow down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true that you refuse to serve my gods to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments, but if you refuse, you will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego reply, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The children forward for a children's moment. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So I have a question for you. We do this a lot. Uh, it's like we don't know what the definition of words are, but you guys always have better definitions than I do. If I were to ask you what the word hope meant, what would you say? What does the word hope mean? Hmm. Kind of like you believe in something, right? Yeah, you're getting there. What else? What do you think about? What do you hope for? I hope to watch TV later this afternoon. That's a good hope, right? I didn't say for the length of time. I hope I didn't say. I didn't say. Um, right, we might hope for a certain thing to happen later today. I might hope that I get good grades in school or that I get into a certain college that I'm hoping to get into. I might hope that I have hot dogs for lunch. There's all sorts of things that we might hope for. To me, hope is, is, is a desire for a certain thing to happen, right? And we can hope for big things too. Like we can hope for peace on earth, right? And that's a big hope, right? And sometimes, do we always see what we hope for? Not always. Sometimes it's harder. Sometimes it takes a long time. So I wanted to kind of share a, an image with you. Who can tell me what this is? Well, what's in, the, what's in the bag? Seeds. I've got a, ba a bag full of seeds. They happen to be beet seeds uh, because that's what we had available. Now, what, what is, what's the hope for this package? To grow into what? A beet. To grow to, grow to its fullest potential, right? Now, if I just sort of, how do I, how do I make them get to their full potential? How do I make a seed go to a plant? Do I just planted? <laughs> they nailed it, right? Are they planted? No. No, I have to do some Right. I got to do some work. I got to do some work. I got to dig in the earth. I got to dig in the dirt, right? I got to put the seeds in the earth. 
I got to cover it up. I got to put water on it. I got to make sure it's got good spots for sunlight, all right? I have to make sure that it's got the right conditions to grow. And some other seeds, that it's not a beet seed, I can tell you this, but some other seeds kind of look like this. What do you see here? Yeah, it's a bulb, right? But what do you see? Is it big? Is it, is it a flower? Not yet, no. But what do you, what do you kind of see? What's here? It's just starting to get some green, right? It was all brown a little while ago, and it's just starting to show some green. Now, if I just sit this here on this pew, uh, is it going to grow into a flower? No. Is it, what's going to happen to it? It's just going to stay kind of maybe exactly like it is and maybe get a little bit worse, right? Because it, it doesn't have the things that it needs to thrive and to flourish. Now, last image. What do you see here? What do you see here, right? It's the same thing. This, Moses, you planted these, right? You know this. You put this in the ground, and just a few weeks ago, it went from this to this. Now, ultimately, he's not here today. I thought he was going to be here, and really, but we'll, we'll yeah, Austro, whatever. Um, uh, so, so we plant things in the ground, and sometimes it takes a long time to go from here to hear, to hear, right? So what do we do with that? It's a seedling, yeah. What do we do with that? Now, Moses, you've checked on this thing every single day. Did you say, have you told me every single day that it's growing? It doesn't always look that way, does it? In fact, I was kind of surprised to go out there this morning and see, because the last time I remember seeing it, it looked something like this, and it came into this. This is kind of an image that I want us to hold on to about hope is that sometimes we plant things in the ground and sometimes it takes a long time. And we can go out there and look every single day and it looks like nothing's happening. But we have to trust that whatever's happening in the soil, that science, that, that work that's happening underneath the ground that we can't always see is helping create life. It's a little at a time. Sometimes it takes a lot longer than we thought. But something is happening. And that's kind of how it is with hope. When we hope for big things like peace and love, for one another and for the world. It takes work, it takes time, and it takes constant attention. So what we can do, though, is we can look at each other's lives and we can say, hey, I remember when you were like this, and now you're like this. That's amazing. So we can look and we can show each other where we've seen God growing in their lives. We can show each other where hope is breaking forth from the ground. And it may take a while, it may take longer than we want, but something is happening in the, in the ground, and that's because God is with us, all right? Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for this concept, this bold, brave concept of hope. God, let us be those who believe it even when we can't see it. Let us be those who know that something is happening in the ground even when it seems like nothing is happening above the surface. Lord, we trust in you for that. We rely on you for that, and we pray to you for that, knowing that you are with us always. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you too want a chance to enjoy the chaos in the nursery, <laughs> we are always looking for nursery volunteers and folks who can invest in the next generations of our church. So let me know if you want to join the nursery as well. We now have the opportunity to pray together for each other and for our world. I want to invite you to check out the prayer request sheet that is listed in your bulletin. Um, all the folks who are on here are connected to this congregation or folks that we love in some way, and they have trusted us to carry their burdens with them today. So we want to invite you to lift up those folks as we pray together. The way we'll pray is that I'll share a category, and you can share aloud or silently a name of somebody that might be on your heart. And we'll close each section with, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, as we gather this morning, we thank you for the gift that it is to have breath in our lungs, a community to belong to, and a world to call home. We thank you that the sun rises without us having to do anything, that roots grow in soil in a way we cannot articulate. And that you are a God who is at work, even when we can't see it. 
God, we trust you enough to lay these prayers at your feet because we believe that you are a God who not only hears us, but a God who cares and a God who acts. Lord, we lift up to you all those who are seeking healing in mind, body, or spirit. For everyone who is undergoing treatment, recovering from surgery, awaiting a diagnosis, struggling with difficult health news, dealing with mental or spiritual concerns, or Lord, who are seeking healing in some other way, we lift up to you all those who are seeking healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we lift up to you prayers for wisdom and discernment. For everyone who has difficult decisions ahead, for all those who are leaders whose decisions are consequential for more than just themselves. For all the folks who are seeking a way forward in their jobs, in their families, or in their world, we lift up these prayers for wisdom and discernment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we pray for all those who are lonely, those who might be far away from those they love because of work, for everyone who is deployed or who works late shifts, for everyone separated by their families because of illness or distance, from their communities or a sense of belonging, for everyone in our nursing care facilities and rehabilitation facilities for everyone in our jails and prisons, those in the foster care system and those who care for them, and all of us who struggle with loneliness, we lift up these prayers to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we pray for our enemies. We pray for people we don't like and those who don't like us. Folks we don't understand. Folks who have wished us harm and done us harm. And we pray for those that we have harmed. God, in moments when we cannot find the words to pray for our enemies, we ask that the Holy Spirit would pray for us. Because we know, Lord, that the world tr is transformed in each of us at a time. Lord, we pray for our enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we lift up to you all that we have to celebrate all that is good and right and holy, all the ways that you have shown up in our world. We celebrate glimpses of your goodness and moments when we've seen your kingdom come here on earth. Lord, we lift up these prayers of celebration and gratitude to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we leave all of these prayers and the prayers that are too deep to name at your feet. We trust that you do all things in love and that you are working together and weaving together goodness, even out of the things that are not good now. God, we pray that you would give us the tenacity to hope, even in a world that it can seem is against hope. We pray that you would give us a defiance in the way that we continue to seek your kingdom, your justice, your mercy, your goodness. And we pray that you would help that goodness to start right here in Sanford. Make us a people shaped by your love 
In Jesus' name, amen. Let us share together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I'll invite us to join in the prayer of generosity as we prepare ourselves for the, our offering this morning. God, who notices the widow and her small but generous gift, and who knows what it means to give all, may your spirit of generosity come over us. Let us be creative in what we view as plenty. God, help us to find ways to offer what we do have in service to you. Give us opportunities to bless others from the gifts you have given us. Amen. When all we know is heartache just don't make sense May we rest in the promise of deliverance When life slips through our hands Hoping can't 
imagine that things will ever be okay. Hoping on justice that seems to never end. Hope is all, hope is all, yeah. Hope to ease our sorrow, hope to heal our pain. Hope lets us imagine that we will love another day. Hope will find injustice to the bitter end. Hope is our resistance. Hope is our resistance. Hope is our resistance. Join us in singing the doxology. Won't you stand with us? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Amen. God, we ask that these gifts would be a blessing to this community, to this world. That they might be signs of hope and love and mercy. God, bless these gifts and bless all of us as we go forth into this world as an act of resistance, bearing witness to hope and love in your name. I pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 through 18. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly home. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. The word of God for the people of God. This week I heard some prophetic words, albeit not from scripture. Do you know where you're going to? Do you th like the things that life is showing you? Do you get what you're hoping for? When you look behind you, there's no open doors. What are you hoping for? Do you know? Those are, of course, from the great Diana Ross, and they are exactly the questions that we are asking ourselves today. We are in a series called, What Are We Living For? And honestly, the reason we're in this is because so many of us here and outside the church are asking ourselves these questions all the time. We carry them around in our hearts. Why are we here? Where are we going? And what are we doing? Why does it matter? Do I matter to God and to other people? In this series, we've, uh, this is week five. So in the first four weeks, we've covered a, co a few other things. The first week, we said, unless you show up to your life, you can't be living for anything. We have first to choose presence rather than escape in a world where escape is always the thing pulling at us. Secondly, this desire we have for belonging and the way in which God invites us to belong rather than to exclude. The third week, we talked about how it is that we as people of God can seek a life of bravery 
when control and security can feel so much more alluring. Last week we asked, how can we find purpose in Christ even when we don't have burning bush moments like Moses? And today, where are we headed? I want to propose that we are all ultimately moving toward hope or fear. Hope or fear. And to quote a well-known colloquial story, whichever wolf you feed is the wolf that will win. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you this morning for the gift of your word, and we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Before we go anywhere else, I want to address the elephant in the room. I feel like every time you talk about hope, there's a thing that sits in the back of my head, and maybe yours too, that kind of collectively is a low hum in our world, and that is, is hope naive? Is it cute, but ultimately unrealistic to hold on to in a world like this? I was at a leadership gathering in Lakeland with the conference, the Florida conference yesterday, and there's a dry cleaner. You know these towns that have these incredible signs? It's like not related at all to the work they do, but there's a dry cleaner that always has a great sign. And the sign said, love is in the air, so is the flu. (laughs) Is hope just a nice idea that we feed to our children, but we grown-ups, we know it's a pipe dream. Sometimes I wonder if we think hope is a fine consolation prize for those of us dissatisfied with our present circumstances or simply a flimsy way of looking at a bleak future. And then today, we hear the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What a mouthful. Thank you, Aaron. (laughs) These folks with Daniel, the namesake of the book, find themselves during the first exile to Babylon. They were actually named Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, but they were renamed in the Babylonian uh, uh, group, with these new names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these four guys, Daniel and these three other folks, are chosen because they're smart and they seem like they could be really helpful to be a part of the king's court. They get to eat the king's food and drink the king's wine and be a part of the crew that is serving here. But they keep finding themselves throughout the book of Daniel confronted with not wanting to participate in this empire's violent and idolatrous ways of life. What happened in Babylon is uh, whenever Babylon would conquer a new people, they would bring the symbols or the gods back from that other culture or community, and they would bring them into the Babylonian temple and, and put them in there, but put them lower. Just to demonstrate, like, our Babylonian gods have won. And since this god, the god of the Hebrew people, could not be contained in a single image, they carried back these symbols from this conquered land. And they continue to place these under the kind of Babylonian God representations that are here. So one day the king shows up with a big old gold statue. Throughout scripture, people keep trying to find a way for gold to be the thing that we worship. I will argue that time is not over. The king's like, hey, I've heard. You guys are causing a little trouble. I know it's fine. It's fine. I'm just going to have them play all those instruments, some of which we know of, some of them I had never heard of. We're going to play the instruments. You're just going to bow down. It's no big deal. We'll go on with things as usual. And they deliver a speech. They refuse. And he gets really, really mad. He gets really mad, so mad they start cutting wood for the furnace. They are bringing the temperature up. They are upset. These folks find themselves literally caught between fire and betrayal. They are stuck between whatever is way worse than a rock and a hard place. And I feel like if you are ever going to give up hope, this feels like a logical time. When the furnace is being turned up to 11, maybe you abandon these other things that are important to you. Now, I don't think nobody, I don't think anybody would, would blame them for being afraid. No one would blame them for deciding that all hope is lost, we'll give in, and we'll fix it later. I don't think anyone would even blame them for considering, you know, maybe we were wrong. 
Maybe violence and death and idolatry, maybe they do win. But y'all, they deliver this speech. They deliver this speech, and we cut it off where we did today because the most important part of our, our discussion today is not what happens to them. If you know the rest of the story, you know it is quite a miraculous experience. But I want us to hear today, without having known how the circumstances would turn out, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say to King Nebuchadnezzar, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, but if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Three dudes facing the fire look the king in the face with beautiful and enduring hope. Now, some might simply call it defiance, and the sassy gal in me just loves that kind of like, look power directly in the face, you know? Put your big girl britches on and be like, "Mm mm-mm. But I love that it's not simply tenacity or defiance here. There has to be hope going on, that there is more happening than just their present circumstances. This is hope at work because hope is ultimately about our ability to zoom out, even beyond the fires in our present moment. This is the gift of following Jesus. The opportunity to participate in a story that is much larger than yourself on a timeline much greater than your own. Following God means a life of meaning, that even my limited time participates in. And it means participating in a better story that God is telling in the world. There's a great uh, liturgical artist. We've done a lot of his art shows around here. His name is Scott Erickson. And if you're on Instagram, he's got a really great daily visual devotion. He creates images uh, that are just reflective, he shares a picture and just a short, brief little uh, kind of thing to ponder throughout the day. I'm going to leave these around if you want to take them with you, but I want to show you. He had this image of these two giant arms, Alpha and Omega on either end, and you'll notice there's a little boat in a storm in the middle of the hands. This is what his caption read. Hope is not positivity. Hope is the ability to see beyond my present circumstances. Hope is not pretending that challenges and storms are absent in our lives. It's knowing that the God of the universe is above and below, before and after, all that we could imagine or endure. It's facing the reality of the present and holding on to the reality of God's future at the same time. We heard in the Hebrews 11 passage that Aaron read for us, this familiar reminder of the stories of Scripture and all the folks who had been faithful throughout God's time. The way in which those folks had encountered God, moved with God, and that ultimately their life did not end with a pretty bow. They did not find the, full, the total fulfillment of all the things that they had been promised, and yet they carried with them the hope of God's future and the truth of their citizenship in heaven. They can continue to hold on to faith and hope in the Lord because they can see God's bigness beyond their present circumstances, even in spite of the petty or scary or overwhelming or confusing circumstances in front of them. In short, they can zoom out. You see, hope is as much a practice as it is a vision. It is more of a discipline than a dream. Hope is the practice of allowing God to help us to zoom out, to see that there is more than just our present circumstances, to hold on to faith that God is moving in all of creation somewhere, even if we can't quite see it yet. 
but if not. If I do not see in the land of the living the things that I hope for, the way in which God is acting in the world, I still am committed to moving in a life of hope and practicing the discipline of hope for the sake of the kingdom of God, for the sake of my neighbor. I will not be deterred in the confidence that God is at work in the world and God's love and God's life will get the last word. Y'all, this is a a lifelong and all-consuming practice to hope. And I'll tell you, it takes a community because sometimes my arms are too heavy to hold up myself. And my guess is that might be true for you too. Hope is not an individual discipline, but rather a community of practice, a way in which we link ourselves in the story that God is telling, not only to God's future, but also to God's people. There's a documentary on Netflix I highly recommend. Um, It's on blue zones. Anybody know what blue zones are? They're segments of the world where people live to be over 100. Um, They live healthy lives. They're trying to figure out why, what happens. Um, They're in some places and not others, and they're trying to pinpoint what works there. And I'll tell you, the whole uh, documentary is great um, for a variety of reasons, one of which is they come up with all the themes. And lots of the themes, I think, are things that we are called to in Christ, belonging to each other, taking care of one another, being connected to the earth. But I found myself stopping the documentary right in the middle and weeping because I heard the story of a man who was in the United States and was diagnosed with an illness that uh, had a very short time period. He was from Ikaria, Greece, one of these blue zones, and he and his wife decided to move back home and to find themselves in the midst of family and community. They interviewed him, and they asked what he was doing as he was working in the garden one day. He looks up with dirty hands, red cheeks, and he says, I'm planting a vineyard. And they said, sir, why are you planting a vineyard? You don't know how much time you have. And he said, this vineyard is for my wife. Because however much time I have left, I want things to bloom and grow for her. And I want her to know that I love her. Because this is a practice of hope. What are we living for? What are we deeply hungry for? What are we created for as human beings in God's world? We are created for presence, for belonging, for bravery, for purpose, and for hope. Let us be people of courage. Let us not be people who give up a beautiful life for the lesser option of exclusion or fear or simply pursuing control. Let's not scroll or ignore or exclude or control or avoid or devolve into despair. Y'all, as followers of Jesus, we have the opportunity to live deep, rooted, meaningful, terrifying, beautiful, defiantly hopeful lives with the God who created us and who loves us beyond measure. May we be people who practice and cultivate God's garden of life together May we live in God's hope. Amen. As we close in worship, we invite you to stand with us and sing, We Shall Overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome.
shall all be free. We shall all be free. the gift of joining God's story is that we are not the first or the last folks who will journey together, including through difficult things, knowing that the God of the universe is ahead of us, inviting us forward and making a way. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen.